What's going on, everybody? This your boy, DC, host of the With The Shit Podcast. I want to thank y'all for listening. If you could, go to the Facebook page, With The Stuff Podcast. Become a member of the crew. Also, you can hit us up on Instagram, With The Shit underscore podcast. Catch us on iHeart and everywhere else. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, DC here. About to get into part two of Kingish. Had to break it up because I ain't want you guys to be sitting here for two hours straight. Uh, here goes part two. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow. Also, make sure you guys go follow G Black, uh, Brian B Line, and Candy B. Uh, yeah, bro. Um, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bro. What's that happen? It happened. Y'all together, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, mate, because I made a joke. Um, I can't remember the joke, but I made a joke. You know, that's what I do. And she didn't find she found it funny, but at the same time, you know how when you say some off the wall crazy shit, somebody wasn't prepared for it, they shock you real quick, like <laughs> so she punched me. And I was like, damn, I'm gonna do it again later, just because you just punched me. So but no, it's just how much crazy will you tolerate shows how much they love you, you know. Yo, can I say uh, something real quick on, on that same topic? <laughs> it, it it really does seem like it really does seem like also uh, we were just talking about this shit too. It's crazy, yo. I think people also forget, like, you have to also make a decision, yo. Like, there, there is going to be problems, yo. And, and I think a lot of times, especially today, and I'm, it might just be my opinion, I feel like people have so many different options. I feel like there's there's going to be... Now, there's certain times you know you got to get the fuck out. Like, you know, somebody beating on you, somebody doing this or whatever. If you're consistently just like, yo, this shit ain't going nowhere. We don't got no future. We don't got the, some things. People change as you get older, you know, progression, whatever. But I think a lot of people do forget to flip the switch, yo. And I think with celebrities, and like I said, it's just my opinion, like, you know, agree to disagree, whatever. Like, I feel like celebrities have so many more options. A lot of their problems are different than, you know, people of everyday working people like that or whatever. They're in the limelight. Like, like G Black even said, like, it's a different lifestyle that you have to agree with, you have to contest with. So if you have somebody who, first of all, you're a fucking highlighted figure, you got people all over the place, you're constantly involved, and then you got your phone and the shit the regular people have where you can date somebody and fucking physically create them like we're playing SmackDown versus Raw or something like that, and you can literally have whatever you want established to you, you think you want it, and then you get it and you still fucking fail because you haven't accepted the challenge of like, yo, listen, I'm going to commit and stay committed, you know, reasonably. That's yeah. how I feel, bro. I no, feel like people I, don't flip that I fucking agree. switch. That makes sense. And and I still think it also comes back to the individual. It's very hard to commit to somebody else when you're not committed to your own inner work and your own healing and your own enlightenment. And you'll just project that on somebody else anytime you're triggered or annoyed. Um, but that's that's just how I view it. Um, you are the last person that needs to answer, DC, if you're if you're prepared, if you're ready. What was the question? <laughs> How important was it for you to marry your wife who deserves a purple heart for marrying you? <laughs> Have you ever seen them guys that come back from war and they be like, I see some <laughs> I've seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I commend my wife. She's because I I'm off the wall. Oh uh, I was, you know, people popping with percent of it yeah it's true they really do man we don't see the shit but you, you but the shit that we do know and we do see obviously like they're highlighted man you know a basketball star is dealing with a lot of things different than you know nine times out of ten than the guy who's going to the office every day or working from home and shit like that it's different challenges for sure yeah. but let's not we got to be re you know what i'm saying understanding see that's why just, being understanding is, is so important because it's like you you have to face facts like yeah they gotta hide it from us but the shit that they deal with in the closet and stuff like that for them I mean it's it's yeah it's definitely gonna be similar but they're probably experiencing way more like heightened you know whether even to just be seeing each other every fucking day or every week or whatever it's challenging. Oh, that's man. why when some of those couples broke up around the pandemic or was having problems, mm. I was not shocked because I'm like, yeah. if you have two actors or you play sports and I do this, we're not around each other all the time. Now yeah. we're on lockdown with these kids. No wonder Tom Brady was like, I'm sorry, I'm not retiring. I, yeah. I got to get back out. I'm trying to get back. That's not like, not like I knew a guy who retired. Right. He retired from work. He's like, yeah, I've done it. He pulled the Danny Glover. I'm getting too old for this shit. He's like, I'm about to retire. I'm going to spend some time with my wife. Two weeks later, this motherfucker was like, hey, bring me back, boss. 
Different life. I didn't know, apparently, I didn't know my wife when I went home. She wanted me to do <laughs> shit. She wanted me to go places. She was spending money. Uh, he was like, I need to work. He's like, I don't care what you put me on. Just bring me back. And you can see, he's like, smell my eyes, dude. Let me tell you a story. I was like, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I'm a pass, bro. I, I see it all on your face. But no, I mean, um, I don't know if it's, it, it is, it, it is important. Um, especially when you're trying to do, you know, the things we do when you're in a lane where you are constantly talking and you're constantly, you know, telling intimate stories or, you know, things that happen in your household in this yeah. kind of setting. Oh yeah. Inviting people in, you know, you have to be very understanding and you also have to have that conversation with your significant other. Cause there are some things that, you know, you 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 want to share, but then you could overshare. Jesus Christ! That's really a funny comment. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's for real. Yeah, did you come home after that five and she ain't been working all day? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> resentment. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah. So you gotta be you gotta be understand. You gotta have somebody who can under who can. T- now, I'm not gonna say tolerate because that makes it sound like they're just putting up with your shit. But you gotta have somebody who can understand that you know sometimes you're gonna cross the line and say some shit you probably shouldn't say, yes. or you know you yes. gonna you gonna you gonna you know cross yeah. the line and be on on a on a show that you know uh, as we were talking about with the cosplays earlier you know a titty might pop out somewhere and now you mm. got the, she walk in the room and the titty out on the screen and now you like yeah. <laughs> and now you sleeping on the couch or outside so you oh, know that's you just have a cosplayer huh yeah she's like. <laughs> Hey, she cosplayers. Yeah, was she cosplaying as a porn star? <laughs> I don't know. I just had to get on the show and the titty was out because I, you know. But, you know, so you got to be, you know, got to be have somebody who can understand, you know, a titty or two might pop out because you might be a rock star. You know, shit happens. Yeah. You know, you can't, it's unpredictable. This, you never know nothing is scripted, so you never know. But I say that. Wow, that's, that is. Yeah, no, that's that's thank you, Raw. No, um, I, don't even, I don't even know what it is. Uh, no, cause my, my oh, wife, Miss, D, Miss DC, I get it. I, yeah. I read it as MSDC. I'm like, is that a rapper or something? She's pretty much kind of like a rapper, but no, um, no, but Jay, you just got to be with somebody who understands, like, you know, whatever lane you're in, whether you, you know, an accountant, you know, you're going to fuck up some numbers one day. So mm. you might come home after you done fucked up somebody's check. Now you got to come home with that just fucked up a check change. And she want to talk to you about, you know, what color is the blinds. You know, so she got to, and then you just got to understand that, you know, some days she going to have problems, you're going to have problems. There's problems. You know, like I said, everybody's crazy. It's just how much crazy are you willing to deal with and, tell, and put up with, you know, and, and what level, at what level do you get off the ride? That yeah, part. that's an important part too. Yeah, I think I think that and that that's I think I personally think that's the biggest part that's different for everybody. I feel like everybody has different levels of hey, how much of this shit am I going to deal with? Yeah, and I think that's where you have to have that establishment. But there are people who are like, ah, you fucking cooked my chicken wrong. I'm I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know they're, they're it. I, you know so. what I mean? Like, should you get married if you're that easily triggered? Like, you know that that I mean. It's a lot of this ain't this got no conversation right here. I'll tell you right I'll, I'll talk about this shit all day. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. That's real. Well, a lot of times when I'm getting ready to do things and I run some of the questions past women or they have questions that they want to ask because we're definitely going to get into some oh, talking shit. topics. Um, they're always interested in hearing uh, a man's opinion, but it's almost like I think I think sometimes we want to hear y'all but we really ain't gonna listen because it's not either delivered in a way that we like or i think sometimes what women do is we forget that you're men and we're women so i don't want my man to be like me in certain ways mm. i i can do my best to understand him and where he's coming from on something especially since we're both technically working in an entertainment space um and do my best to respect what that means for us as individuals and collectively but also i'm like you're a man so if we're like case in point, I brought this up months ago. I'm like, when it comes to how we're going about future videos, I'm like, hey, to keep this so you're not in any trouble and we're also in a Me Too movement, I'll pick the girls. I don't mind being creative director because I like 
people like Tiana Taylor and how she makes women look, how she makes herself look, how she makes whoever she's working with look, because at the end of the day, if you're dealing with somebody who is like G Black Oso understands and like you grew up in, in the music game, it's important to me too that my man looks like that guy. And there's certain things that comes with that, but also respecting the fact that I am me, I have my boundaries and what I'm with too, and just talking about that stuff. But I have to understand he's still a man at the end of the day. I'm a woman. I don't need those to be so mixed up and us being so the same and how we think and everything else to where that's just weird to me. So I find that when I ran some of these questions past the women, I'm like, I don't think some of these answers you're really going to want to hear from some men, but I don't mind. Asking. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's go. Um, one of the questions, and I know. Come on, let's get these questions out here. Right. So, all right, so boom. Ask DC. <laughs> gonna tell it all. So, you're you're married for a certain amount of years and your wife comes to you and she's like i want this to be open now a couple of times a year you can sleep with who you want i want to do the same Fuck yourself. are you open to something like that and if you are not are you more open to it if you get to be the one sleeping with some other people she's okay with that hall pass and she does not entertain that Hey, I, I, I'll raise my hand. It, that never works for men because I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> you why. That shit. Women fuck who they want. Men fuck who they can. When people do that thing, it'd be like women get these Adonis, like Chad Johnson. <laughs> You know, these dudes that got 401ks and shit that's way better than Not you. 401ks out of shit. They got they got insurance and shit while you over here praying that you don't get sick. And then when you go do it, it'd be like um Sally from the fifth floor who got bunions and her shoes sit up like this. So that shit don't never work out for men. So that shit just be it'd be one sided. Like she beat Raheem, you know, this nigga dreaded. <laughs> Why did it have to be named Raheem though? Because that's what most niggas who who would be out there. Be that hey, I ain't gonna lie, Raheem sound like he he busted yeah, down. That, that oh, nigga that, got, he got a good tailor suit. This shit fit right, you know what I'm saying? And then you got motherfucker Ruth who can't even bake a fucking cake to save her goddamn life. And you know she talking to you, and all her teeth is like this. It look like her shit just death row signed her shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit just it don't fit, but. So I would mean, it you know, work out better if you had better options well, than what you just named? I probably. I mean, shit, it, this should be, it'd be cool then. But then if not, you know, Sally on the fifth floor, barely pay her rent. It's shit all over the place. You go over there. She talking about talk to you dirty. It's just like, oh, man, I stepped in something. I got to go. <sighs> Ugh. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you only want to step in. So now you're down at the bottom, down at the, in the bottom level looking at the bottom of your Jordans and it's something that you've never seen before in your life and it don't even look human like it should have been in a house before. You know, I digress. Y'all go ahead. I, I clearly I'm dealing with some issues over here. <laughs> go ahead, John. Brian, you, you had your hand up. Sorry, I just... Nah, I you good. I appreciate your, um, your perspective there, brother. But um, yo, listen, if my girl ever came to me and said, hey, um, let's be open and uh, immediately, this shit I was talking about, about committing and everything before, I would snatch that fucking ring off her finger and I'd call the lawyer in that same conversation because, yo, if if you ever, if I ever put, that, that's the fucking problem, yo, in, in my opinion, that's the problem, yo. I, I, I always got to verify myself by saying the my opinion shit because I don't want to be like, oh, this, other people are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. But what is marriage, yo? Marriage is supposed to be, yo, this is us. We together. We together. The fuck are we supposed to be doing now? Not in nobody's case. People get divorced, man. For all the reasons that we said earlier, people change. People go through different <laughs> shit, man. People try different things. People work different ways, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of shit can happen in a year, you know, let alone five, let alone 10. A lot of shit can happen. But That's right. five. Yeah, nigga. The, Seven years. Anyway, I'm sorry. The one fucking thing that I can honestly say is, man, I feel like commitment is supposed to be with the people that you are in a commitment with. And if you want to have some talk about, oh, there's somebody else that we need to enter in my thing because something's missing. I need something. I miss something. I want something. Then you need to go find that shit without me, bro. Because now you basically, at that I, how I look at it is, you want to now have your cake and eat it too. You want, you like me. Yeah, we've been fucking for 20 years. We fuck like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, all that shit. We dress up. Um, Barney, and we do all the crazy on, shit. Everything. Fuck it. 
I, 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 I had this wall right here. I had some shit like that in my old apartment. We used to fuck by it. And she used to talk about, oh, I'll dress like Batgirl. And do... we, we used to do wild shit, trying to, trying to keep it up. Clearly, my nigga is Barney. You know what? Bro, that, listen, that, that's no, we don't kink shame. No kink shame. Don't, hey, I, did, I know. I did, that's what I just thought about it. You know, bro, safe space, safe place. Safe space. <laughs> listen, please speak freely, bro. But no, listen. No. Because the party is wild to me because that suit is big as fuck, yo. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm doing that shit. Don't take this person, but who the fuck wore the costume is my question. I don't want to get all of your business, but who the fuck was Barney that night? Because that's a big ass tail and everything. You, you know what? Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, you gotta make real. the tail to get to the tail. Listen, Nigga, that's gotta so make it happen. <laughs> that's anyway, the, the mouth is all oh, you know what? Go ahead. Sorry. The biggest, the biggest shit is the biggest shit is I feel like if you starting to look elsewhere, it's time to be done. Like, you know, and I know I am one of them type of people that's like, yo, listen, I, I, I like as, as something break. Throw that shit in the trash. Oh, I, I cooked that food too long, and I, I left it on the stove. I forgot it overnight. Throw the whole fucking pot away. Like I, I'm one of them type of people, so I, I know that's kind of a personality trait as well. But if you start, in my opinion, commitment is that word. I'm with you. Yeah, we fucking rest my life. If you don't like this pussy, you getting tired of it, whatever. You better start beating that shit <laughs> for the rest of your fucking life. If you don't want to. Then you made a mistake, bro. And if you gotta come to me with these silly ass conversations, like, um, I'm thinking, hey, honey, I was just wondering if I can talk to Jasmine upstairs and get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, that's complete disrespect in my book, yo. So you're telling me this ring, this commitment that we made to each other, you now telling me you want to involve somebody else so you can have another dick slot up in you, and I'm supposed to be? Oh, we could be open three times a month. In my opinion, if that was the case, just take the ring off and go, um, go, go live with that nigga Jerome or whatever fuck his name was, Raheem. Raheem. Brian, yeah, Brian. Tell me how you really feel. All right, you black. <laughs> bro, <bruh. laughs> real. We gonna let Brian cool off. <laughs> hey, I'm heat, bro. I, 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 I thought people say I was glad I had a flashback. He thought he was working through some shit. Right <laughs> shit, I'm telling you, bro. I put myself, I put myself in the scenarios. That's why, like, I'm, 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 I'm living that. Shit. I never had it happen, but I'm living that shit. I'm like, yo, I can just, I can just imagine that shit. Like, this nigga had a flashback that never happened. He was like, the, the motherfucker. I'm an actor on this motherfucker. I'm telling you. Go ahead, Black. Nah, I, I agree with everything Brian said. I mean, once you get to the point that um, the commitment to each other isn't there anymore, just ba based on the fact that, you know, you're trying to go outside of what was established as the boundaries to begin with, then uh, it's a problem. I mean, now, if this is something that, you know, for instance, swingers, if, if that's something that you committed to in terms of your relationship going in, I think that's something completely different. But just in terms of a monogamous relationship, I think when it gets to the point that you want to begin to, I, I, first of all, I think it's perfectly natural to have those thoughts and, you know, even desires. But I think that the commitment comes in when um, you're able to discipline yourself enough to disregard those. The whole idea that, you know, uh, women don't want their man looking at a woman's ass or whatever, like that's kind of ridiculous to even. Yes think that it's almost like a reaction sometimes so i do get how it can be disrespectful in in a particular setting or scenario i do understand that but just to say that you as a as a woman to not understand that i mean just as a person to not understand that your partner may have these uh desires or feelings is unnatural to, for you to even think but uh, again it to me the, the the difference comes into play when you either a act on it or b um address it in such a way that you're contemplating changing the, I don't even want to look at it like a, a contract, but like changing the terms and conditions of the contract type thing. No, I think um, I think I, made it in that I'm way. I'm down with you right there. It's a business deal. It was a business deal. So yeah. it makes sense to talk about it like a contract. I honestly think it makes sense to treat it like a business and, you know, have your quarterly evaluations, look at things. What are we projected next year? I think, just the logic side of it, that's smart to do. And of course, leave space for all of the feelings and everything else. But I, I agree with, with what you just said as far as the contract, because I could throw people off when you're like, that's not what I signed. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Right. But they also wanted to know, let's say, hey, Jerome's at the job. I'm feeling away. I, do you want her to say something to you now? Doesn't mean she acted on anything. But do you guys want your women to be that real to say, look, I find somebody very attractive to a job. I'm not doing anything, but I might even switch departments because I don't even want to get caught up. I was just I was actually just gonna ask you that too. I was gonna say, you know, um, how do you, how would you feel if she actually told you that shit? Like, like in my book, 
I feel like, you know, if somebody came to me and asked me straight up, like, hey, babe, I know it's going to be kind of crazy, but can I, you think we can maybe have like an open, you know, commitment for the next two weeks? Um, it's just, I just really like this guy at work and I just, I really want to fuck him. Like, you come to me and say that and I'm standing here. Once again, see, I'm, see, I'm, 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 I'm an actor and shit. Like, I'm sitting there thinking to myself in my head, like, this girl is in my face asking me if she can fucking do something with somebody else. Or this guy is in my face asking me if he can sleep with somebody. Are you the brazenness of the question alone is enough to make changes happen immediately. Great question. Let me interject and challenge you with this. So let's just say it's still the similar scenario, but it's not brought to you in that way. Cause I think it's easy mm-hmm. to talk about a topic like this and think high level disrespect. Somebody's coming at you like, yo, I'm trying to fuck Donnie right now. Mm-hmm. It is, is that kind of thing. You could be, we're in a rough spot. Uh, maybe I have postpartum because we had another kid and and you're not as in tune. And I've been trying to reach to you, but you're not. But there's a guy at the job and he, he opens my door. He he pulls out my chair. It, for a lot of women, it'd be the little stuff. And then the next thing you know, course. he's a little crush. We feel away. And I of know y'all know this. Why other men don't be trusting other men like that because y'all know the game. Y'all know how slick some are. So it could even be those little seeds that are planted. And sometimes before you know it, it's like, whoa, I kind of have like, a work crush. And I'm saying those for, for those listening, work crush stuff, because a lot of people spend more time with coworkers and around them than they do their own family, those that aren't working at home. It's just the reality of it. So then if she comes to you like, Brian, this is how I'm feeling. I have been talking to you about this, but I'm kind of now feeling this way at the job. I'm not going to act on it, but I wanted to tell you this. And how can well, we, you know, forward for that? I, I kind of feel like that's a little different. I would, I would say, say, I would say, I would what's say, what's the point of you telling me? I would say, why are you bringing this to me? Honestly, like even even for you, if 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 you came to me or your man, your husband, and you went to your man right now, honestly, rapper, I'm pretty sure you're probably a good dude. You know what I'm saying? If you went to your husband right now and said, "Babe, listen," in the nicest way, the most respectful way possible, listen, I, I know it's gonna sound fucking crazy to you, baby. I I know it's gonna sound crazy to you, yo, but. There's been this dude at my job, and I mean, he's always so nice to me. Like sometimes I don't have money for lunch; he fucking pays for me. I mean, like I don't have money for lunch wouldn't happen. But I'm, I get, I get what you're saying. Whatever, you feel me? Yeah, whatever, 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 whatever the scenario you want to paint. Yeah, serious. But um, <laughs> I, 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 he just, he just really, he just really does everything for me. Like everything is so great that he does. Like I'm really thinking about. I'm having some thoughts, and I don't really, I don't really think they're good thoughts. I just wanted to bring it to your attention because I kind of feel like I'm fucked up because I'm saying this stuff and I'm thinking this stuff. I'm, 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 what, what do you think? And then you got to sit there as a, as a man. Now I'm speaking as a man because I'm a fucking man. Um, I got to look at my wife and my woman in, in the face and say, okay, so you're telling me that you're attracted to somebody. Well, it's kind of difficult, man. I understand. I can be understanding to you being attracted to somebody. So now we're on a kind of level where we can have a conversation. But if you're introducing an idea of because of that, I would like to explore options to where I can act on what I'm doing. Yeah, that's different. Now We're it's talking, a different situation. Yeah, that's a different situation. Yeah. We opened the, the the question was if somebody wanted to be open. That's why I'm saying like this was oh, the no, conversation. Yeah. That, that's what we're talking yeah. about and segue that into another question they had where it was Got like, you. all right, leaving the open stuff alone, can I yeah. realistically tell you that? Because something I've even told my fiance before, the type of honesty and transparency I've wanted with a man comes from seeing my daddy lie and, and be caught in the streets of Japan, uh, you know, all the time by my mom and stuff like that. And then dealing with the stuff I was dealing with, with an ex-boyfriend, with ex-husband. So I desire this high level of honesty, even if it feels like I'm hit by a bus by what you said, I need to know. Cause finding out stuff on the back end for me, it makes me feel like I don't have a choice in this. So I'd rather hear something up front, no matter how harsh it sounds, but I'm also a person that, I give brutal honesty. I've worked on that over the years because everybody can't handle that. You got to use discernment when to use it. But I try to be as honest in real time as possible of this is what I'm feeling and thinking and knowing what it's necessary to say. And for a lot of people, infidelity is a reason why relationships are messed up, marriages fall apart. It's a real thing. It's it's that in money. So it's like we need to be transparent about this money. We need to be transparent about where we're at when it comes to like our sex capades and anything like that. So I'm not, I'm not, whether it's me going to him or him going to me, I'm not going to punish you for your honesty. I appreciate that. But to piggyback off what you said earlier, Brian, that doesn't mean Keisha and them can all come over. And for a lot of women, it's one of those things. If even if we decided, hey, let us be the, the person to bring the woman in. Don't you just yeah, bring yeah. somebody in? It's like I had this wild idea. I bet you did. You all did since you've been eight. 
Like, it's, man, man. I mean, you know yeah. <laughs> but same, but same, I'm not trying to take over nothing. I'm just, I'm just trying to say, like, we, 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 you talking, you talking off what shit I'm saying, like. But how many, but how many times is you going to be able? Me and my girl is very open. Like, we go to the things, we watch wrestling and shit, and she's like, oh, the, I'm, Bailey's my chick. That's my baby. Y'all, anybody watch wrestling? That's my baby. I love Bailey. I don't give a fuck what anybody say. But um, she got the Usos. Oh, the Usos, damn, they fine as shit. Look at them. Like, or even when we're out and I see a girl and I, I don't, I'm not disrespectful. Like, I got my baby with me. That's my woman. Like, I'm not going to disrespect, but if oh, shit, man, look at that shit right there. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to look, you know what I'm saying? And she, and she knows I'm looking. Even this time, times where I'm like, babe, you see that girl big ass titties right there? Oh, yeah, she do got some big ass titties. We see, we see them before y'all see them. Most of the time. <laughs> exactly. Yup. She, that's what she say too. We but, see them before y'all see them because we be at cons and I'm like, Pikachu was thick than them up. I'm telling you, I'm telling that's you, right? <laughs> that's the respect I fuck well, you with. Laughing, you laughing, G back, but that's that a real thing that happened at J1 Con, babe. You remember that thick ass white? First of all, she was a white girl, that's what threw us off. <laughs> mm. And I was like, the thighs match, I was bugging, I'm hitting his arm like because <laughs> I couldn't believe mm. it. But again, he's created a space for me where I don't feel like you about to run off with any chick that got a fat ass or nice titties or whatever. It's like yeah. in your own mm -hmm. space, whether it's a real life chick or whether when he knows I'm drooling over Megan Good, Megan The Stallion or Megan Fox, because I have a holy trinity of Megan. Mm -hmm. He knows mm -hmm. it's those things where I can like be like, oh my God, look at Meg and look at this and that. But you created that space. I think exactly. when something mess up, you don't create that space. So she feels triggered. Like every time you look at somebody or like a certain picture or content or or judging you off your porn category, because I will judge if it ain't Ebony. Ooh, shit. I'll judge you off of that. You judging me. You have freak. <laughs> freak, nigga. Midgets, all that shit. I don't, I don't give a it's fuck. Sad. You are I, I tell her myself. Small, small, small people, bro. Small people. Small people. Little, little, little people. Small people in a party suit, baby. So I tell you, yo. <laughs> but I think a lot of women do want that type of uh, transparency and honesty from their man. But I think to have that and to keep that up, you you have to be open to how he's going to come to you in the ways that you guys have with a lot of these questions that they're wondering but also it helps when a man can create that environment where i am not consistently feeling super triggered and jealous and and all the kind of like the petty things that can arise because those are normal feelings but i don't think it's normal to every single time yo man do some oh so you want to fuck her so you did that and just that that's, that's ridiculous. That's exhausting, but it happens a lot. I mean, I know y'all know it happens a lot. It's barbershop talk, I'm sure. And yeah. and some men are kind of like bogged down by it. And like DC was saying earlier, don't want to go back home because, you know, there's there's a shrew there waiting to attack you. Um, so I appreciate the honest answers on that because they definitely had a lot of sex questions. The last one that I'll ask, and I don't want to, just because of DC. <laughs> Because <laughs> we because we know know each other, so oh, it's like, okay. It's, I was about to say like, what the fuck? Like, no, it's just like the brother sister thing. I know your wife, and so it's it's just funny. But they want to know to y'all what is an appropriate amount of thrust pump action time when you, <laughs> when you are having your sexual faith. Because some <laughs> we were talking about earlier, like you gotta. What the fuck? Like, no, because wait, in the group, the in the group, in the group that I'm in, the women were complaining that a men will swear they finna go all night long and blah blah blah, but they're not interested Bye. in yeah. pumping for 45 minutes. But I was like, well, I guess that goes back to the guy and what he thinks is an appropriate amount of time for sex. So, what's that time frame look like for y'all? I mean, I don't know if you put a time on it. I mean, and if a motherfucker is counting pumps. You think about yeah, counting pumps? Counting pump is going on. pumps is wild. If you That's pump, crazy shit. If you got a counter in your hand and you counting pumps, <laughs> well, you even just thinking about it, like what the fuck is wrong? Like, I didn't fuck like, to a beat before, but man, like, wow. Not like, to the beat, G Black. He said, "All right, I know this track." I know. But, but, I see if it but wait, is he counting down or counting up? Because like that's the real. Count down. I'm not counting down. Right. Counting down is crazy. No, like, I got five, down is nuts. I got five strokes left. <laughs> counting yeah. down is a little nuts. I'm gonna be right back. Counting down is nuts. Yeah, like counting period. Like how does this? I don't know. Like, I don't real. know. There's a real answer to that question, and that's weird that you even even like oh, women. No, the, the questions that women have around sex, because understanding we don't have penises, our bodies are completely different in what we need and want. But on top of people that are oh no i have it thank you thank you for being accommodating baby <laughs> 
on top of hey, hey, I told him she let you float down the river, man. We're gonna get her. Don't worry about it. Don't laugh at that. With that big ass <laughs> ring you bought, brother. She better not let you go like old boy Titanic. He's committed. No, that <laughs> he's great. He can have whatever he wants. He's cool. Um, but no, the way that we think about sex, especially when I'm in these groups and a sex topic comes up is drastically different than what men do. So when they are talking about like, oh, how how long or how many strokes or whatever, I'm like, maybe we are thinking and counting and, and that far in our head yeah. at times. But I'm like, I don't I don't think they think like that, but I sure can ask. Are we talking like duration of like a round or like the whole thing? So that got to a topic too, because they were talking about how long foreplay and what that constitute should be because for some they're like foreplay is starting from the morning when you tell me good morning through text or whatever kiss me before you leave the house or whatever others were like hey as soon as his face hit the clit that's my foreplay time and going forward and then as far as full penetration um that time frame that that arm thrust was crazy yeah that (laughs) was wow that was (laughs) i think we have to blur that out for the kids (laughs) No, you just freeze frame it. Just back, yeah. back, back, back. They're going to be like, why is her arm going like that? Why is it going? That's right. That's going to be the, the, uh, the uh, thumbnail. That's, but for some women, I think it's easier to say, oh, you know, he should at least be able to last 25 to 40 minutes. But I'd also like to challenge that since we are built different than y'all. It's like, hey, if you're not in shape, if if everybody's bent a little different, if you're not 21 anymore, can you do something for me? We not, we not, it's different. So I was like, I'll pick their brains as respectfully as I can about how they go about their sexcapades. But I'm like, that's a really, it's a really odd topic from that, from that angle, from how some of them were thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like generalized questions instead of like, you know, a topical thing. Like, just from hearing it, like, you know, how long can men last? Like, you've been hearing shit like that for a long time. Like, you can't really? last. Oh, I can. Even the jokes in the in the in sitcoms was, oh, I went about three or four seconds. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, yeah, the counting pumps, that's, like, that's craziness. Um, I feel like it's always different. Like, you know, it's, it's always different. It's about how, how into it you are, how much buildup there is. It's been different with different people. Um, I personally, I would say... I was one of them people that when I was a little younger, I ain't old or nothing, but I'm definitely bigger. I'm out of shape now. I used to fight this, do a whole bunch of shit. But um, I, I used to really be able to go. Maybe I'll say, like, you know, yeah, good about 10 minutes doing the foreplay, having fun, kissing, doing all this crazy shit, whatever, feeling, touching. I'm very touchy feely. And then, um, you know, once it starts getting into it, you know, you're getting into it, then you got to stop and hold on and fucking, uh, okay, let me, and then and just keep going. And then, bam, you get that first one in. I was always one of them ones that I could stay going and be like, all right, let me get it out the way and make sure we ain't having no kids and then continue and do that for a little bit. And after that, the second one is always a little bit longer where you last a little longer and shit like that. So I was always good with that. Now, shit. You know, 15 minutes, and we both good. And, you know, and that's in everything, you know what I'm saying? And unless we just really into it. And uh, we fuck with toys. We do all of that shit. We, 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 don't, we don't just do the regular stuff. Like, we try to do different shit. We don't do the whole experiment and really, um, you know, I watch porn. I, you know, we, we just do different shit to make it interesting for each other. Like, that's pretty much it. We don't count strokes and shit. It's just whoever's getting off. If I get off first and I'm like, oh, baby, I'm tired, then I'm going to go to work on. Let me go grab that shit out the drawer. Like, you know, let's go see what's happening. That's how we fuck around. And um, that's how I fuck around with a lot of chicks that I've been with or whatever. Who's next? Go, go, go. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'm a, I'm a Virgo. Now Very, you uh, fine shit, child. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh naturally uh very sexual beings um that being said i mean i never really timed it i guess foreplay i say if i'm trying to like put a clock on it maybe like 10 15 minutes um like brian was saying the round one and round is different rounds so i say round one is uh maybe like 20 25 minutes round two gonna go a good like 40 minutes and depending on if i had my energy drink for the day we're gonna go ahead and go for round three again that's just the virgo in me but who knows that that's some might fall asleep and wake up back in it and you know Mm -hmm. that type of thing but um 
I, I don't know. I've always just been somebody who, um, again, I never really like timed it or nothing like that, but I just really enjoyed having sex just as a recreational activity. Maybe again, it's just a Virgo in me, but yeah, I never counted the, no strokes or nothing like that. Though. That's a little wild. The countdown is still cracking me. <laughs> yeah, the countdown is crazy. The countdown means you got to get an idea of where you started from. from. <laughs> like that. Mm, you got to think. Mother, there are motherfuckers who count up, and there's motherfuckers who count down. Which which way is the pendulum swinging? If I'm a count, I ride a count. That's count down is a sniper. <laughs> he, like you know this motherfucker is stroking, and he's really counting down. Like that's one. So, so did you just say you had six okay. strokes left? Like no. Yeah, like yeah. he whispered, like baby, six more strokes. I'm there. I'm like, what the? F-? If, if if I'm her, I'm thinking like, is this nigga about to blow up? Like, what is he counting down to? Have y'all ever seen? Have y'all ever seen those porns where where they count? And they'll do this shit where they'll sit there and be like, yo, I'm going to count to fucking 50 or whatever. And then they fuck and they go one, two. And then I don't think they're counting strokes, but they're just I counting. Think, that's you know, like, like 50, you're going to burst. Like you're going you on nut and shit. And then they'll fucking no, do it. And the girl's like, different. 49, 50. And they're motherfucking like, <laughs> have an explosion and shit. <laughs> what page is you on that you find in this shit, brother? It's actually, like, a, like, porn, like a Sesame Street version of it, like the count. One, and ah, ah, two, ah, 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 three, ah, ah, ah. Yo, different shit be working, man. You coming to different shit, squirting and shit, and <laughs> Can you count down. One stroke, ah, 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 ah. True stroke. Ah, ah, ah. Three. Ah, yes. Three stroke. That's the number for the day. All right. All right, DC, you're up, uh, I guess. Oh, I'm old as fuck, so I don't count. <laughs> Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Oh, <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> you said like in your sixties or something. I'm pretty sure there's some great I'm hair. Here. He's down, yo. Yeah, good for him. Viagra works for everybody, I guess. No, oh, you got little teas and stuff. But, you know, insert ad for Blue Chew. Yeah, mm-hmm. big God show up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What I'm supposed to say here because like counting strokes. Just, <laughs> I don't know. Just a wild concept to me. Like it's just. Sex is meant to be enjoyed. If you're trying to make it, uh, I don't know what they're doing. It's Marathon. Just, oh, wife in the group chat. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to watch what I say because my wife was watching, so I didn't want to be all. Because I get it. Not that's her first comment, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me laugh at this shit real quick. Yeah, yeah she's like, like, definitely going to crack up. Yeah. Uh, he was baby. telling all y'all trade secrets, girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also texted me. It's like, yeah, go on and say something, nigga. I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> 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 but no, um, I really don't know what I'm supposed to say here because, like, again, are we supposed to be counting strokes? Like, that's just never been a. It's just a no, wild some concept. Of the, some of the comments and the questions I was reading, I was like, "This is really wild," and further uh, makes me believe in my point that there's just so much a lot of women don't understand about men that is very simple. And they, they, it's overthinking and overcomplicating it because of how we're naturally wired. And and that's not how y'all go. Y'all are like, look, I'm here. You here. What's up? And there was just nope. a lot of crazy questions. No I judgment can't. at all. But I would really like to know who asked that question because <laughs> her sex life got to be trash if she don't even measure it in time. She measures in strokes. I will say I don't know the girl personally. Glass. I don't know the girl personally because again, some of these groups, it's like, oh, only these type of girls, and we don't, you know, say who did what. But I will say because I was being nosy, reading some other stuff on something she posted. She's also somebody that Thanksgiving head is gross, and I was like, you. Yeah. I, I thought about you. Is correct. <laughs> me from the fucking contest. Yeah, I think people people also ask. I I I feel like people also ask silly shit just to ask silly shit too though. 
Because like I said, that that's that's always been something. I'm pretty sure everybody can agree. Like that's always been something that people said. Oh man, it's always been like the joke. How long do you last and shit? Like there's people who fucking you know bust before you even start fucking and shit. Like yeah, or they, even I mean, since they're talking about music, a lot of times the bravado and rap and and R and B songs. Like yeah, I'm doing six rounds and all the rest of the stuff. And it's like probably yeah. not. Yeah, but Very that's true. also okay. It's a, like, but the way the media needs to go, and this is, I'm going to segue this to advice you would give teenagers. Um, but my biggest thing, and this can be on any topic, but my biggest thing when I'm talking to my own teenage son before I got with new daddy and um, when I would be like helping in children's church and different things, I talked to kids how the music they listen to and the media they watch talks to them. But I also consider the fact when it comes down to sex, when you are visually and physically stimulated by what you're watching, a lot of times you're seeing the same kind of lies over again, where each of them are coming at the same time all the time. And the girls just automatically went with little to no effort because of how things are cut from movies and videos and what have you. Also, if you're watching porn that is directed by women, porn directed by men, a lot different than what's out there for women. So I'm like, if you learn everything that you want to about sex from those type of things, by the time you get a real front of you it's gonna be a hot ass mess so i'm like i immediately when i'm talking sex and relationships i'm like dump all of that shit out of your head from whatever is on social media whatever you've been getting off to because it's completely different when you're with somebody so if you were going to get advice to the teenagers what are they gen z now is that where we're at for those kids nowadays i think Uh, who knows i I I think we started back over it's at a again Listen, I have no clue, but for those I kids, don't know what I am, let alone what these little niggas is nowadays. I'm tell you, I don't need. I'm a, I'm a '90s kid, '80s baby. That's all. I, that's yeah, what I, I go by. I think you would be X uh, if I'm right about your birthday, TC. 80, your... 80, uh, 67. Uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> 67. I hate you so fucking much. You a good so... dude. If you sixty, <laughs> if you were sixty-seven, and you doing a podcast, you doing good, brother. Yeah, you know, less stress. Don't know how to tie their shoes oh, and shit. Yeah, stress free. <laughs> oh god, don't know how to order their medication on the computer. No, <laughs> no, no, that's why they, all a lot of the motherfuckers who look old when they uh forty two, the niggas was counting they strokes down. I'm telling you, when you look at your forty, you see some of them niggas in Akron. They count like, a different number of strokes. Yeah, they was count. No, 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 different kind of strokes. <laughs> Yeah. Different strokes. Listen, everybody can't. <laughs> way back, child. But if you were going to give advice strokes. to the teenagers nowadays, whether it be about relationships, money, anything, what do you feel like they need to know? Don't watch that shit. Ain't fucking real. Stop, stop watching all these these fake ass movies and shit like that. Or whatever, yo. We had the same conversation on my on my show uh, not too long ago, yo, about how watching porn will fuck you up and have you thinking that you you got a bionic man. Um, to please and satisfy a woman and shit like that or whatever. Like, even with the context, like you were saying, with the music and the TV and movies and shit like that or whatever, oh, the man don't know what a clit is and all that shit. Man, nobody fucking does until you get there. We don't have one. Why would we know? And it's not like as soon as you get into the situation, like the girl's like, okay, well, this is here and then this is there. No, they're just looking at you to figure this shit out. So you start figuring this shit out and then they still not satisfied. They're like, oh, well, now you're not doing it right. You know? So you go through a process. They gonna have to go through the process. I mean, I'm not planning on teaching my son how to fuck girls like i'm gonna teach him the birds and the bees but i'm not planning on teaching him like that direct because i'm like i will tell him like yo listen there's gonna be a lot of stuff that'll happen but be comfortable man make sure somebody that you like and then make sure there's somebody you trust and be safe we tell him now you know what i'm saying 13 years old he found his fucking phone trying to touch girls and titties and shit already and so we we've had the conversation but i'm not gonna play it like oh well you need to spread her legs like this and open it like this. You know, <laughs> i don't like, think any parent out of here. Like, do that. hopefully you don't do just shit you'll be surprised i mean like you know it, it, hey, it's it's did. i'm yeah. saying yeah people do it that's why we got to talk for kids that. oh my god i forgot all about that you right going in bro Damn. Or, or, or thinking porn and, and movies is real life and um that's where right. you'll feel incompetent you'll feel you know like like you're not good enough and that's oh, yeah, because you'll notice right character. away it's not 15 inches long and a whole bunch of other stuff that you're used to looking at and you're like oh god for real you cannot imagine on some real shit yeah um i think for me uh two things i would uh give him a piece of advice same piece of advice that my mom gave me which was um uh, put it in her mouth her mouth can't get pregnant mm. <laughs> I'm actually kind no. of almost not mad at that. 
No, I'm joking. That, no, no my mom actually did tell me that though, and it. <laughs> that's hey, some logic. <laughs> these, these days, that might be bad advice. Cause, well, that's a whole different thing. But a whole different thing. Never mind. Um, but that's no, good. Um, that's that was good. I, no, I think the um, the real piece of advice, though, honestly, would be um, to just recognize that um, that all women aren't the same. That was something that for me uh, was difficult to understand in terms of you might, you know, as as men, we develop our little tricks of the trade or whatnot, and you might think that you got it. You you were a girl for a long period of time or whatever, and then you move to, onto a different situation, and the same moves don't work. It may cause you to feel incompetent or, or feel like, you know, you don't know what you're doing. But the thing about it is, it's just we have to know our partners and not feel inadequate with having to um, relearn, uh, you know, how to please this particular partner. Like Brian was saying, actually, that might be a good idea. It, it sounds stupid or whatever, but it might be a good idea for, you know, the, the man and the woman when they first have sex with each other to sit down and shit, give me a tour of your anatomy. Tell me, you know, yeah. what you like actually as opposed to like, you know, being on the phone trying to, what's your favorite position? No, actually, while we're doing this, like, you know, what do you like? Help me, guide me so, you know, we can make this act, you know, be the best uh, situation for both of us. I love that answer so much, especially really? with what Brian was saying. Even though you were giving some exaggerated examples, something that stuck out to me is what you said about the woman's not going to be like, so this is this and that is that. Because I was a super late bloomer and my ex-husband was my first everything. So I lost my virginity at like 19, 20. And I wasn't like, well, I know exactly what it takes to get me there. Get me where? What, what is an orgasm even? Like, what does that mean? Because also between the household and just society, <laughs> we're too sexual, know too much, we're hoes. And if we don't, then we don't know anything about ourselves by the time we present ourselves to somebody we feel safe with. And then you're not comfortable enough to be like, well, I don't like that. You just automatically think, well, I guess this is just supposed to make me feel a way. There's just so much that I've heard young girls just miss the mark on because they don't feel comfortable enough to have that conversation. But if we're looking at a man to lead and especially lead in the bedroom, I think that is a great example, G Black, of just being like, hey, let's have this conversation instead of all the bullshit we can be sexting and talking that shit over the phone. Let's cut all that out and be like, look, we don't know each other's bodies like that. Even if we got to know each other mentally, we don't know each other's bodies like that. But let's just try yeah. to uh, not judge each other and see what we can do to get there. Cause I think even at all of our big ages, cause I don't think anybody's in their twenties, are they? Nobody? Okay. So with nobody being oh, in their oh. twenties before, and with us all have being more than one person before, I think some of the best sex you have is with someone that you can be that real with. Um, that way, if somebody's leg <laughs> has a cramp or somebody makes a face where you're like, damn, you good? It was good, huh? <laughs> like, you can clown a little bit with that. And it, I think that makes for even better intimate moments. So I really, I really like that as an example. Yeah, I think that comes with maturity as well, though. That's the problem. Like, you, you usually don't learn to be that honest until you start to mature. And maybe even even if you maybe maybe if you don't have even that many experiences, like, you know, let's say somebody doesn't lose their virginity until they're 30. But you have enough maturity, you know, developing in life to kind of maybe have that. Hey, listen, even if it's just like, you know, like, I just I don't care anymore. Like, you know, hey, listen, we don't got time. Let's just see. What, what do you like? Let me see. Let me see if I could do it. And then you just practice and shit. And every time it's a learning experience and, you know, you just get amazing. You know what I mean? Like we probably would be, if we were just more developed instead of being silly and shit, we'd probably be amazing like sexual partners, but I don't know. Maybe that's part of the fucking flaws that we're supposed to have. So we don't got a billion kids running around. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Everything's a well, structure, right? I, I mean, they can and obviously it's got something else going on. Yeah, <laughs> hey, Wait, what was the question? Because yeah, yeah. they had some great ass answers, and I don't want to be no, one. They did. They really well. They. I, I gotta follow that shit now. I right. Gotta, you can oh, never God. go after them, especially when G yeah, Black. I can go first because these niggas be profound and shit, and I be just like trying to answer the question. <laughs> uh. they, they decided to. Um, I said it could be about anything as far as giving advice to the teenagers now. Oh, don't follow these. Um, these alpha male dudes and shit. Stop listening to these niggas. I just seen what's the dude fresh and fit one of them motherfuckers the the um um Hadabi looking dude uh, I don't no know. I know who you're talking about you stupid for that which one is that the one that used to be F not Hadabi fresh uh FBI sorry I'm getting my acronyms mixed up uh what's the, the light skin dude so he did an interview and it was like um have you ever most men uh like giving head or something like that and he was like no and the woman was like have you ever done it he was like yes back in the past it's like oh so you stop he's like yeah it's just like why. This nigga said because vaginas are disgusting. Let me ask you a question. You're supposed to be an alpha man and you like women, but vaginas are disgusting. What the fuck are you doing? 
He might be being real. I'm not gonna lie to you, DC. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that vaginas are disgusting in in a whole. That is. I know you don't want to. That is a twelve year old answer. Grow the fuck up. Kind of, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, all right, right, but listen, but listen. I'm not saying all of them are pretty, but grow the fuck up. He he was a generalized twelve year old answer. Oh my god, vaginas. Ew. Let me ask you something. Have you ever caught a bad one? Have you ever caught a like like a real bad one before? Probably. Like in a situation where you fucked up. And you some nah, bro. Shit, I definitely. I, I, what are you talking about? Bad? I don't know because I'm trying I'm to talking about it. where you went down and you smelled some shit or tasted shit that was you like. Know that you know that down like <laughs> like. Every, Please, nah, like we we we, yeah. we we talking he talking in general though. Like let's not. And then given the context of who he is and what I've seen, I understand where DC's coming from. Because yeah, you, you talk about how you, all these women and this and that, and then you be like vaginas are. Like, look, 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 raw, raw, raw. I'm saying, like, I've had, I've had a bad experience where I've smelled some shit. I, it was a pillow. The girl had a pillow between her fucking legs, and she was sitting there, she was laying on me, and I was holding the titties and stuff like that or whatever. And she took the pillow out, and I went to like kind of just hold it, and I smelt that shit, and I almost threw up, yo. And it smelled like blood and just stench. And you know, in that part right there, I'm not gonna lie, it's like that shit kind of fucked me up. And I, I eat pussy, like I, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a freak. I don't give a fuck like about a lot of stuff. But I can understand why somebody being relatable, like, hey, I'm not interested in doing it because it's just not. Some girls don't clean right. I got this shit. I can understand. When I, was younger, I, I, I can. That, that's not what I'm talking about. Into the majority. I, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about the minority of the, the, the you know. Yeah, the, I would like to think that's the exception to the rule. Yeah, right. The, I'm not talking about the five. I'm just talking about in general. This nigga is a grown man who talking about all these women and all this and that, but vaginas disgusting. So you're to me that just sounded like a question of a nigga who just. Ain't getting it like he said he's getting it. That's how I took it. Oh, I got you. Yeah, well, I was looking well, at DC, it on the other side. DC, even if he was, I think from what I've seen on their podcast, because if you ever watch, if you ever started watching Kevin Samuels when he first started, and then everybody that came after he blew up, they're all kind of like <laughs> variants of that. You're right, you're right. Nah, so nah, seeing, seeing a lot of how he went <laughs> down and what it evolves into, I, did it, I, I think <laughs> that must say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nasty ass word though. I didn't though. But. So it, so it's like some people would still do it. Then it's like, well, who's really the gross one? But given what he's talking about, I think because he thinks he's such an alpha, the idea of giving a woman pleasure in that way, I think that is what's disgusting to him. Because yeah, that's what I'm like, and that's, that's the part I really yeah. him. Yeah. And I'm like, grow the fuck up, like you. But no, it's just don't that shit in general. Like, stop. We need to stop idolizing people who. Think they're leaders and don't know how to lead. Um, they're mainly just mm. following a trend that's leading kids down. Like I see, what's the other dude? It's another kid. Andrew uh, Tate. No, he's another one. But it was uh, Scruncho, Scroochie, uh, some. It's another. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, Sneeko. Sneeko. Yeah, is a dude. Uh, another one. White kids. He signing oh, autographs. Oh. He's like. Kid's 11 years old. He's like, fuck these bitches. And he's like, yeah, that's right. Like, come on, man. Like, we need to stop following motherfuckers who don't know how to lead and don't know how to follow, who just don't, or just saying shit just for the fact. Like, I don't, like, I love being able to talk shit, but there's a difference between talking shit and just saying shit. You feel yes. what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a big part of context, bro. And that's even with this conversation we have it right now. Like, I was interjecting in a way where it's like, yo, literally, I'm seeing a different side than even what you were seeing right there. Yeah. So it's like that that's literally how context fucking matters, man. Because like you're saying, you don't want to just blindly follow. That goes with the whole watching porn. That goes with everything. Context matters, man. And we live in an open world, an open environment where you can pull up any bit of bit of fucking information and get it from anywhere. And it could be wrong or right, but you have no kind of, you know, ability to decipher for this shit because there's nobody leading you to the fucking correct information. And that's why it's difficult, man, with sex, everything. So I don't even mean the sex. I just mean in general, like it's too much people just saying shit just to be saying shit. Like I've seen yeah. some podcasts, even some people I used to deal with, like I've seen some of their stuff now and it's just like you now like the where you started and where you at now you've changed and i can see you just saying shit just to be saying it like and you I just they might hope see you working for somebody else and then they and, that's, and that's what i mean that's what i'm saying like we have too many people like that who are following this trend and not just being themselves like to where it gets to the point to where it's like damn we got 55 red pill dudes and they out here saying the same shit and, and vaginas are disgusting and then i'm doing that and then we leading kids like it's just it's just weird 
and it goes to what? I think we just live in like an out. You said what? I think we live in like an algorithm culture, whereas like we used to live in like a ratings culture, and like now people see things that that work on a particular algorithm, so they may even cater their content to that just because. Kind of circling back to you know what we talked about at the beginning in terms of people doing things that they wouldn't necessarily do just because they see it uh, working for somebody else. And right. unfortunately that's the, the time that we live in. And um, I, I don't necessarily know if it's something that we just have to grow through in terms of this may just be the, the, the era that we live in, or if it's something that we need to be hands on with in terms of we need to steer the ship somewhere else. Cause this shit is kind of crazy now. Cause you do have people that uh, again, just say things just to be saying things and not necessarily realizing that the, the actual impact it has in the real world because they were just trying to get their YouTube ad revenue up. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, right we, now, we, yo. yeah, we, we definitely need to um to to do something in regards to that, in, in my opinion, from my perspective. But uh, I definitely uh, do see what you're talking about, though, bro. No, and I think those are all really, really good answers. And it made me think about so many, I won't say their names because there is one couple that is so famous for going back and forth. They definitely get their Ike and Tina on. And it's like, there was a time where we wouldn't have celebrated that in that way. As far, and I say celebrate as far as giving it attention. <laughs> <laughs> even attention, and they're like millionaires now yeah. because of yeah. streaming and views and everything. And it's really, really sad. Uh, high key disgusting. Um, but like you said, it's like, how do we steer that? How do we take control of that? Do we even have the influence, especially at our age? Do we even have the influence to do that? Or is it up to the people that are younger than us now to feel a way about it? Are you triggered by this? Are you so numb to it because it's just what you grew up seeing? So now I don't, I don't think there's a possible way that they can't be numb to it because like we're all in agreement of that's all that there is. Everybody, even us right now, bro, I've said fucking shit a million times. Exactly what G Black was saying. Even right now, even what we're doing, we have a platform that DC has made and we getting on this bitch right now and talking about whatever we want to talk about. And even if it is what we feel is structured and has good context and it's not saying that a pussy is nasty and it's, it's described in fucking complete understanding. It, everything that we're doing right now is our freedom of speech and ability to connect with potential billions of people. Millions of people can watch this podcast right now and take every bit of context that we're saying oh, literally in every put, single you put, way. You put, you put a little sauce on it. It might be three people that watch this. <laughs> it might be, it, but, it, but but it's the potential for uh, three million. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the state the potential for three million, though. Uh, really yeah. Bro. <laughs> it's potential though. Like I'm saying, like you you were just saying be real, right? So I'm being real. Like, so no, yeah, it's, it you know, might be three people, but somebody might catch this motherfucking shit and say, these guys right here are talking incredible. I love everything. And the one person that needed to see that shit, that's the importance of this shit too. That needed to see that shit and take that shit and fucking go and put it on to put you on TV tomorrow because of this conversation. It's potential. That's the key. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You as an artist, you know it's the same thing. So with that knowledge, that's why it's so dangerous for everybody to have that capability in their fucking pocket. You don't need to go and shop. Most people have the shit to pick up a, a camera and speak freely directly to billions, to the masses. Motherfuckers had complete control of that when they were reading newspapers and flying fucking paper letters and airplanes and shit back in the day. But now we have the ability to speak completely connected just like the internet bro this is this some shit right here listen y'all y'all with the beeline shit yo listen i'm telling you this is some shit we talk about right here it's, it's real bro like this this is the problem with the generation z and x and all that shit it's a new fucking level we integrated with technology and it's putting us in different situations that we don't even understand because it's still building on us, yo. And you know, the people that do research on this, they, I, cause I, like G Black was saying earlier, I go down these rabbit holes of research you wouldn't believe <sighs> randomly. Day. And um, they were saying, we won't even see the true impact of all of this stuff, including what we went through with COVID until about 20, 30 years down the line, what that's done to the mindset of mm. all of us that have gone through it and the younger ones. And I'm like, God, that's kind of scary to not know the type of world. I mean, like we don't know everything anyway, but I think yeah. there was a way that they could do some predictiveness back then um, in a way that is almost impossible now because of how things curve. And also I ain't gonna hold you, depending on how far down the rabbit hole you go and what you believe, you know, government control and stuff and harp and this mm. and that. Listen, Big shit. Stuff out there. Message. I, that's another, that's another no. episode. I ain't gonna open that box because we two hours in. But I'm just yeah. saying between all of that and then just what naturally could occur, 
I don't know. I'd just be happy to wake up every day. I feel <laughs> you, bro. Never, I feel you, sister. You never know. You. But before I know we wrap up, because this has been great. Two hours definitely flew the fuck by. I've loved all of oh, you. Oh, shit, two hours? Damn. Yeah, well, you guys like, are great, we, man. We for two hours. Much love. Like, much love, like, yo. This has been great. Yeah, I, I, I've this loved the conversation. Been, this has been really, really good. Yeah. So before everybody, like, plugs their things and stuff, just tell me one thing, like, in less than 30 seconds that you're looking forward to next year. And it can mm-hmm. be big or small. Um, I am uh, releasing my uh, long-awaited 10th album, and that's uh, something I'm really happy about. I have a few uh, interim projects dropping between now and then, um, but that's the one I'm really excited about. It's been uh, maybe two to three years in the making now, um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, and I'm going to be doing, like, directing all the visuals and stuff, so that that's uh, it, it, it means more to me just because as middle, opposed man. to it just being... A, a musical presentation it'll kind of be me finally getting to present my vision in totality so that's what i'm excited for for this year next up who's next um taking more trips and also i'm doing we doing another march to the record book so if y'all went there for the first one last uh january for martin luther king that. weekend we did a whole weekend of nothing but live streaming from saturday night to monday night it was uh what's that 48 hours 48 hours of continuous live streaming. It's about 30, uh, 20, 20 different podcasts, about 30 to 40 people kept coming in and out. Um, it was lasted. It was fun. Um, so we're doing it again this year. This day we're probably going to go from Saturday to Monday night again. Um, not sure. Still working out the details, but the March to the record book, I can't wait. It was fun. Got a lot of networking in, made a lot of connections, and hopefully we do it bigger this time because we might start Friday night till Monday night. Um, okay. But the people want it. That's awesome. Yeah, I, rem- I remember people was talking about that shit. You made noise with that one right there. C.A. So, yeah, Kanubu, I was. I remember I was talking to her about that. That was amazing, yo. But much, much success. Hey, first I just want to say once again, I'm the newcomer here. Like, thank you guys so much for having me on the platform. Like, I hit DC up and I was like, man, I've been watching you for a while. We ain't collab. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, I'm definitely glad I had the chance. I want to definitely welcome you guys to, you know, definitely be guests. I would love to have you on. G Black, especially you, man, because you want to come on an entertainment show, shout out your stuff, do a full interview, and let you show off, man. I would love it. Um, so definitely hit me up sure. if you're interested, brother. But um, yeah, man, um, I, I, I'm really looking forward to my new um understanding of what I want from this business and what I want for this uh this web show, because I don't call my shit a podcast. I try to keep away from podcasts. I'm trying to just trying to be different, honest, honestly. Just <laughs> what I'm trying to do. But um, yeah, I'm looking for like my new enlightenment and what I'm going to bring to this year. I'm trying to be as consistent as possible, so I'm not taking any breaks. I'm literally just bullying through the year, uh, full throttle. And I'm gonna um, you know, have as many shows as I possibly can, content creation, and make this my job forever no more going back to the regular workforce if i can so yeah definitely big big goals in mind but um yeah but yeah it's been it's been awesome on the show today y'all oh thank you everybody for answering all those fun questions and also make sure um because i know it'll be posted because dc does an excellent job in tagging people you follow everybody you repost it. It costs zero dollars and zero cents. Like I repost some stuff sometimes, even if it's not my thing. But I respect somebody's mm-hmm. hustle. I respect their consistency. I'm I'm just that person to do that. So I respect it. I'm always gonna plug my shit. So book candy. Follow me on IG. I am on the book of faces, but I typically like IG better because um, my link tree is there, and you can find everything. I am throwing our twentieth reunion for anybody from Okinawa, Japan, that is looking for like the best reunion ever. I'm doing it, Dallas, Fort Worth next august is going to be fire i am halfway to my goal of getting this venue money it was my first time doing a gun f- go fund me y'all because i don't like asking for help i'm working on it um but finally asked for some help and people are coming through so that is a big deal uh adult prom i'm gonna run back again a vampire ball i'm gonna run back again i'm still doing the princess tea parties and everything else bitch get married Next year, too, there's going to be several things going on for that, which I'll post about. G Black, you know you're going to be able to come through. Oh, and you too, DC, I guess. Um, to a couple of <laughs> Goddamn minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. You know, I just had to mess with you. But no, we're going to make this uh, a nice laid back thing. I don't believe in fully being a bridezilla. I just like to play it up. But there are so many ways I'm 
learned since being in event planning that you can make shit pop based off of who likes you. Do not underestimate the power of being liked. That gets me further than any type of degree, any type of, oh, I've been in this field this long. People just fucking with me have be in positions that are really nice for me right now. So please be be nice, be be likable, respectful as much as possible. And it can really, really get you far. So and also if y'all didn't say y'all IGs or TikToks or anything, like promote that too before we roll. That's right. Here you go. Oh well oh yeah. damn that's very smart. I love it. He said I ain't saying shit. Love it. Yes, flat yeah. I wish I was prepared man. <laughs> right, right back in school. I'm, 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 I'm like, shit. No, you yo, can turn around and start writing it down, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> like, boy, yeah. listen, honestly, at this point, I'm happy to say that if you type in the beeline um, on Google, it finally pops my ass up. I guess I've been doing this shit yeah, long yeah. enough. So, um, yeah, if you type in the beeline entertainment, I'll definitely pop up there. Um, but yeah, I'm on um, social media, pretty much everything. Please follow TikTok. I'm trying to build my TikTok. I want to go live. You know, I'm doing every fucking thing. But um, Brian dash B, well, Brian underscore B underscore B underscore line. And um, you can find me. And please subscribe to the Beeline Web Show on YouTube. We got a lot of shit. Three shows. We do that wrestle talk as well. DC, you're more than welcome to come join. And any other wrestle. Hey, I see you got that championship belt right there, G Black. You yeah, just- I mean, hey, yeah, hey, I mean. Let's go. Like, I'm definitely down with that wrestle talk, bro. We- I don't think you've seen this. this is- I got to uh, get-, get it, bro. <laughs> I was just saying I need a fucking belt. I don't have no belt back. Yeah, I was right. just going to say, I feel mad left out because I don't have a belt, but I cosplay. I love your background. I cosplay as gold dust. I got I to gotta so... challenge you, DC. I got to unite the titles. What's up? Mm. Hardcore that. rules. Falls Not count you. anywhere. Cage match. Cage match. Cage match. Uh, Hell in a right there. I earned, I earned this. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. This is my, I, especially when I seen Bray Wyatt pass, this belt meant a lot to me. Bro. He was like, you know, one of the ones that had it. Um, real quick, up, before we get out of here, uh, one, I appreciate y'all. This was like the first time I've been live or done a live show in about four months. Feels good to knock off the rest a little bit. Uh, I'm still working on some things. Um, what the shit is not going away. Um, it may change. Some things might be different. Next week, we're doing Family Feud, baby. Uh, <laughs> can't wait for that. Uh, we got Blurred's Eye View versus a team I'm not going to name yet because they told me to keep them a surprise because they're coming to kick ass. Oh, that's so, going to be so funny. Uh, so next week is going to be um, amazing. Also, another thing that's near and dear to my heart, like King-ish, is Queen-ish, where we do the same thing, but we have a panel of women. Um, so that is coming, I hope, uh, in October. I'm working on putting that together and everything. So, again, I appreciate y'all for coming out. Appreciate everybody who watched, everybody who comment. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, follow these uh, amazing people right here. Uh, what shit ain't dead. Um, it just took a, a brief good um kicking the ass but i'm here now life is settled um got a lot of dope people i'm ready to work with a couple interviews coming um formats changing but yet still like i said everything is going to be still what the shit so um but it'll be everybody up here appreciate y'all like i said uh everybody who watched appreciate y'all we're gonna get the fuck up out of here i ain't got no crazy intros or exits or nothing like that so i'm just in this motherfucker like You've been listening to What The Shit, a product of Black Legacy Productions and WMIC Media.